Welcome back to the Archive Medica Training and Diagnostic Guide. This is part two, logging in. In this section, I'll go over some command line operations I use to analyze Archive Medica. So I want to highlight these four basic components, a more simple version of the uh, diagram I showed in section one, because they become important when we want to do debugging later. The dashboard is the front end part of the application that the user sees. Overall, there are not really a lot of investigative work happening here. If there's a problem with the dashboard, it can usually be seen in the browser's console log, and issues are usually browser-based in nature or have something to do with JavaScript. In a web stack, these are considered client-side errors. MCP client and MCP server work together. MCP client performs the actual work and can be scaled up to have multiple instances running. MCP server is the core of the system. It controls the microservices, configuration information, and it maintains a log of these interactions. Finally, the storage service is an important part of Archive Matica as well. It's a standalone web application that handles moving files to Archive Matica for processing and from Archive Matica into long-term storage, and it keeps track of those locations for later retrieval. So now I want to talk about some of the actions I take when I'm investigating Archive Medica hosting servers. First, logging in. You'll log into the system with a dedicated username and password. By default, you'll be placed into the directory where the Archive Medica sample files live. Sometimes I need to move files from my computer or to the Archive Medica server, and I use these commands to do that, SCP. Note that I need to be logged out of SSH in order to run SCP. If Archive Medica is acting strange, a good first step is to make sure that all the major processes are running. Here are some of the major things to look out for. The script looks at all the processes that are running that also are using Python. All of these services should be running. The dashboard, the database, Elasticsearch, storage service, FITS, and MCP server. It should show both the MCP server and the MCP client. In addition to the previous slide, these services should also be running. MySQL, Elasticsearch, Gearman, Nginx, Nailgun, and ClamAV, which is our antivirus scanning software. The next step in debugging might be to check the amount of space available on the machine. The longer script that's listed below will take a while to run, but it'll let you know the total size of each directory and all of the child directories if you need a comprehensive overview of how big all of the folders are in your system. One of the most common issues is running out of space. Free space can be an issue, keeping in mind that for processing, Archive Medica may need up to three times the amount of free space to continue working successfully for each package moving through the system. You can also set up a cron job to delete files from common places on a weekly basis if this is an issue. It's up to a systems administrator to approve deletion of files and clear up any files that don't make it all the way through processing. So checking the amount of disk space can be a bitter, bigger job than you think. Finally, if you're experiencing erratic processing behavior and the files are failing inconsistently when performing memory intensive actions, like when running FITS, you might want to use TOP to see the task running or sleeping. It also tells you the CPU that's being used and the amount of memory versus are free that versus the amount of memory that's used. The load average should be low, less than the number of CPUs. So if a server has one core, the maximum number will be one. If your CPU has eight cores, the maximum number will be eight. And to exit this tool, you have to hit Control-C. So that's all for part two. Stay tuned for part three.